Previously on Super Idols RPG. Uh, oh, uh, you heard about the, you know, the idol club? Yeah, I saw the flyer. I'm interested in checking it out. I'm holding a clipboard. Who knows where I got it, but I have it now. If you can find the real meeting spot, that totally must mean you're serious about this and are ready to commit to the club. I'm not happy with this either, but this is our first class. I'm not sure how much practicing you were expecting us to do. <sighs> I, it's, it's so hard to win these competitions. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. We all have. Oh, hey, uh, Cynthia, right? Miss Knight? Yes. Your aunt stopped by earlier. I think she's waiting for you outside. And what you see is basically just a photo of the school with sky above, and there's a big yellow arrow pointing to the roof. I'll just put all the pieces together and kind of leave it on the counter so everyone can take a look. Oh, it's on the roof. I guess that makes sense. There's there's lots of space up there. We could practice in the sunshine and it would be so good. Oh my god. And Emily seems very uh, excited to, at the idea of practicing on the roof. As soon as she says, you know, in the sunshine, Valerie, <laughs> uh, <laughs> an extra... Extra tired sigh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to invest in a parasol. <laughs> I guess it's not February, huh? <laughs> so anyways, yes, you have your you have your map <laughs> and you can follow it if you want. <laughs> and D Diana's just like murmuring to herself like, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Why are we doing this? <laughs> uh, Cynthia, do you need to talk to your aunt before we go? Yes, I should probably go talk to her real quick, and then we can head up there if you like. If you guys don't mind waiting, or I can just catch up. Um, let's go up there together. All right. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take control just a little bit here. I'm gonna take Cynthia. So you're gonna head sort of towards the the front. You're near the front of the building anyway, since you're at the office. So you just sort of head out the front doors. You know where your aunt wants to meet you. There is an area sort of like where cars can park in front of the school, but it's a little off to the side. There's a there's a little collection of trees nearby that you can conveniently sort of stand behind if need be. And you see, sure enough, you see an old station wagon outside and an older woman maybe in her, like, early 50s, curly, like, tight curled, graying hair. Um, and she she smiles very wide and, and waves at you and gets out of the car to meet you. Okay, so I'll walk over. So you all see Cynthia walk off. Just get some fresh air. <laughs> yeah, what are y'all what are y'all doing while she's doing this? Does anybody want to does it do you want to like be good and stay put or does anybody want to try and get closer and listen in? Um can I like look over and make uh like pointed eye contact with Valerie and be like, I have to go to the bathroom. And then I just leave. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, as as soon as uh, Angie says that, I, uh, without breaking eye contact, say, yeah, me too. And uh, Diana joins you and joins in with you as well. Like, oh, I think you're, you're right. We should all, we should just go freshen up for a moment. And she, she knows what y'all are on about. <laughs> <laughs> and then you walk outside of the school. <laughs> <laughs> so you all like scooby-doo style like creep towards the, the cluster of trees and try not to be seen yeah do we do that thing where we all like peek around a corner and it's like all our heads on top <laughs> yes, of each other please. i'm gonna say there's like a little like there's like a, a little like i don't know like an electrical shed near the front of the school that you can all hide behind as well just so we can get that shot all right so um uh, cynthia you are meeting with your your aunt, whose name I will say is um, Teresa, who I definitely just didn't just name right now. <laughs> so so Aunt Teresa waves at you and goes, "Hey, honey!" Very, very, very wide smile, like teeth pearly white showing. How how was your day at school, honey? Hi, Aunt Teresa. Um, I'm just signing up for the Idol Club right now. 
like you suggested to me. So, uh, we have our first meeting up on the roof. Is there anything that I should know about? And a flash of concern crosses her face. Um, and she, she looks, she looks left, she looks right. Um, you got, y'all pull your heads back behind the shed and she doesn't, (laughs) she doesn't see anybody watching or listening. Um, she pulls you in a little closer towards where the, the trees are and leans in and, and whispers, um, are, are you sure that's the safest place? There's lots of people who use drone cameras to watch people. Are you sure that's the safest place you could be practicing? Is there any way you could get them to move to another, another well, location? Well, we haven't met the president yet. We uh, are what? about to go meet them, so I'll talk with them about that. That seems like, like a very unprofessional way to run a club. I'll let them know. But yes, you do. Wherever, wherever you need to practice, it needs to be either inside or somewhere where it's harder for prying eyes to get at you. You know how important it is. It's bad enough that we have to meet like this out here. Like, who knows who knows who could be Yes, listening. I understand. Alright. I just wanted to make sure that everything is going according to plan and that you're, you're still you're still okay? You're still on board? Everything's okay. And she, she sort of frowns. I don't... You don't seem very enthusiastic about that. I'm just a bit hungry. Well, yes, it is important to keep up your nutrition levels. But, yeah, she still gives you a bit of a suspicious look. She knows there's that you're not super psyched about this, but she she knows better than to push at this point. All right, well, well as long as everything is still going okay and nobody's asked any probing questions so far, you've been able to keep people at bay? I haven't really met too many people yet. I mean, we're just starting out the school year, so I'll keep you posted. Yes, the the fewer the fewer people you can get involved with, the best, I think. The Idol Club is necessary, so of course you need to get in with them as best you can. But any excess friendships, keep those to a minimum. Uh, actually, this feels like a label shift. I'm gonna quickly look at your labels and see what makes sense here. Ooh. It feels like she's trying to tell you who you are and how the world works. So let me just see here. So. I'm going to say because she's trying to tell you to keep your social life to a minimum and keep focused on what your your mission is, she's trying to lower your mundane and raise your superior. Are you going to accept that or do you want to reject that? I think I'll just go with it. Okay. At so this you can, point. So you can change that on your character sheet. Yeah, your, your mundane would be minus one and your superior would be plus two. Yes. Yeah, I think at this point I'm just trying to uh, keep them happy. And go along with things. So as she she leaves you sort of on that note, like she gives you a nod and 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 gives you one last like for if anybody's nearby, like okay, well make sure that you come home soon, sweetie. See me sometime, okay? I just wanted to make sure everything was going okay at school, and I'm glad that it is. So good luck out there, kiddo. <laughs> she gives you a very awkward thumbs up. Thanks, Aunt Teresa, <laughs> and give her an awkward <laughs> smile and a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, and she gets back in the the station wagon and drives off. So, Cynthia is probably going to start heading back to the school, so y'all probably want to hustle. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I absolutely hustle. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, uh, Michelle, why don't you roll assess the situation to see if you notice anything's afoot? <laughs> or wait, is that, is that the right move, Dana? Sorry, I'm going to probably ask you a couple things as we go. That's fine. Yeah, I think that works. Okay. Watch out. Oh. Ooh. Kapow. 14, just underneath the kapow. So, you, you're not... You're not fooled for a second. <laughs> you see, you see this this group of like five other girls like rushing like they weren't just hiding behind the electrical shed. <laughs> what what do you do with that information? I know that this is I know that that's not a, a one off the list of questions, but there there isn't really a other mechanical yeah. way to do like a perception check. Yeah, I'm panicking a little bit inside, and I'm wondering what they heard. I guess I'll just follow them in and kind of see what happens. <laughs> and because you rolled so well, I am I am gonna give you a uh, a plus one. It would be when acting on answers normally, but I get, I'm gonna say it's a it's a plus one when I think if you're faced with any confrontations about this from the others. Okay, just to reiterate, out of that conversation, what did we hear? Because I know like there were parts where um, her aunt was whispering to her, but I just wanted to know 
like everything else was just like lay low blah blah blah. that stuff was all like we all heard that yeah i think you you didn't hear all of it very clearly but you definitely heard like wisp uh like whispers of words like um like don't engage unless necessary or or stay low or drone security that kind of thing okay okay thanks drone security yeah like she was talking about like she was afraid of like drone cameras flying yeah. overhead on the on the roof and seeing people yeah yeah no it just meant like i feel like uh angie would not get what they mean by <laughs> <laughs> drone security <laughs> just like who cares <laughs> in this school okay yeah. so you you all like book it back to the the front atrium area where the office is like like you weren't just doing what you were doing um and cynthia makes her way back in behind you um, I think, like, I would first be trying to look, like, totally natural, which isn't that natural at all. It's just, like, a really obvious lean on the desk or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I totally been sitting here the whole time. <laughs> yeah, Valerie has her phone out. She's just staring at her phone. Uh, her phone screen's not on. Her phone <laughs> oh, no. looks closely. Emily looks, like, extremely nervous, like she's visibly shaking, like, we did a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Diana's playing it cool pretty well. Like she she has a fairly like neutral expression most of the time anyway. Um and then Karen says, "So what was that?" Okay. Are there any teachers around or is it just us? Yeah, no there's there's no teachers in the atrium. Like there's just the office nearby, but it is an atrium. It's fairly echoey. So you could be heard from further away if you're staying in here. Okay. Um can I herd everyone into a room somewhere real quick? Uh, sure. Let me just see what's nearby. There is a trophy room right off to your right, where there probably wouldn't be anyone because there are very few trophies in there. All right. So I'll say, everyone, let's go talk in the trophy room real quick. Sure. It's not like yeah, there's any trophies okay. in there. And it is after school, so there's not really anyone monitoring that room very closely. Yeah. So y'all can head in there and just sort of shut the door behind you. Be fairly confident there's no one here listening. So what did everyone hear? Um, some stuff about drone security? Is that it? Um, and stuff about you avoiding people and getting in with us? Diana looks very suspicious at, at you. Oh. I also look equally suspicious. I kind of shrug and say, I mean, we're all just here to, you know, be idols, right? It's not like, I mean, that's that's what we're here to do, right? Is to do the job and, like, be successful. <gasps> Oh my god, are you a secret celebrity? Are there cameras in here right now? <laughs> there are not And then cameras. I start looking around and like waving. <laughs> I don't know how I should react to this. <laughs> well, I guess I'll ask you a question. Do you want to reveal anything right now to them? Or do you want to give them a complete fabrication? I don't really know them at all right now. So I probably shouldn't say anything. Okay. Well, you know how ants are. She's really into her Netflix shows. Oh, I get it. She's just really paranoid, right? She's a bit eccentric. Totally get it. Mm-hmm. I had a maid like that once. V Valerie definitely shoots her a look. Like, <laughs> a maid? Really? Diana gives you the same look, basically. A maid really look. I'm just nervously looking to the side and hoping everyone bought it. Karen stares off into space and goes, hmm, maids are cute. Yeah. Okay. So you give them this, you give them this BS story about your, your aunt's Netflix shows. And how, how much do you, would you say that everyone's going to buy this story for now? Actually, here, here's a, a perfect opportunity to pierce the mask. Would anybody like to pierce Cynthia's mask? I'm going to say Evangeline buys it just from her um, past of already feeling like she was um, better and above most of the small town folks. So for her, it's totally believable that Cynthia has a paranoid aunt. So she's not <laughs> suspicious at all. She's like, oh, yeah, that Seems makes legit. sense. Yeah. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> uh, I think. Valerie is going to try to pierce the mask just because uh, I think it would be interesting. And also because, you know, she does have a, a like, quote unquote, secret celebrity persona. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I don't think that's what's going on here. So let's see. Okay. That is a partial success, a seven. 
Okay, so for Pierce the Mask, you're basically trying to see a person's true intentions with this move. So you got a seven with your plus one Dane and minus one from Cynthia on it. Um, and on mm -hmm. a seven to nine, you get to ask one of the following questions. What are you really planning? What do you want me to do? What do you intend to do? How could I get your character to blank? Or how can I gain influence over you? Do I have to answer honestly? Yes. Yes. So what I'm trying to figure out is what do you intend to do? But all I'm really trying to figure out is if you are actually trying to join the idol club to be a successful idol or make the group successful, or if you have some some motive that would, you know, actually interfere with the group. I want to join the idol club and be successful. All right, then at that I kind of relax because I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. Your secrets are are your secrets as long as we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah, Valerie, you give kind of a once over to Cynthia and sort of like study her body language and decide that she seems like she's being honest. Like she maybe she doesn't want to tell everything right now, but she seems like she genuinely does want to be part of the club. I'm going to try and change the subject. Hey, should we go to the roof and meet the president? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Emily goes, yay. <laughs> I'm excited. And Karen <laughs> goes, Woohoo. I'm relieved. And Diana says, oh, yeah, let's just get this over with. I am going to give this president a piece of my mind when we get up there. I'll leave it to you. All right. And so then up we go. You head to the roof. There is, I'm just going to say there's a, an access way somewhere nearby. It doesn't really matter. So you make your way up there. There's not much up here other than like the structure that houses the stairway entrance. But there's not much else up here. There's no one, there's no one up here, in fact. Um, and I'll give you this one for free just because I want to keep this moving along. As you look around for anything that might indicate something, one of you spots on the, the back of the door that you just came through one more piece of paper with handwriting on it. <laughs> uh, I, I grab the paper and, and I'm just going to read it out loud as I read it. Sure. And as you grab it, Diana just like shouts off to them. It's like, are you fucking serious? I'm like, I'm, I'm too tired to try to be uh, conniving or secretive at this point. So the paper reads, Double surprise, double exclamation mark. Bet you thought it would be cool if club meetings were on the roof, right? I wish, triple exclamation mark, but school policy says we can't be up here for long periods of time. Boo. So the real location is actually in an extra special super secret place. You are so close. Just one more puzzle left to solve. On the back is your final clue. Again, best of luck, idol hopefuls. See you real, real soon. Amberly S. Fort McNally Idol Club President. Seriously? She wants to make sure you're really committed. Uh, let's. What do you want to bet? It's the room we started out in. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe just go there first. So, there's there's one more clue on the back of the page. You flip it over, and it says, "Oh no, we forgot one of the most important parts of being an idol!" Triple exclamation mark. What is it? If you think you know. Head to the part of the school that you think represents it better than anything else. Music. I mean, I already went to the went to the auditorium. Oh, you mean the like the music room? Music doesn't seem to be the one that we actually touched on yet for the themes. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Everybody nods in agreement. Room two sixty four. Right, and let's fast travel to room two sixty four. And we're not sitting on the roof. <laughs> so y'all y'all take your time to get there, but uh, you get there just as a woman with a brown pixie haircut, kind of a shorter lady, maybe like five foot, um, is just starting to walk out of the room. She's just got some stuff in her arms, like she's just packed some stuff up, um, and she sees you approach. And people who have been to this school uh, already would know that this is Ms. Doyle, the music teacher. And she goes, oh, hey! Oh, I was think. Oh, thank goodness! I was thinking y'all would never show up. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> Here oh, we are. Thank goodness! I did have to get home at some point. Ah, oh. I wonder what took us so long. I know that that Amberly can be a lot sometimes, but it, this seemed like a fun activity for you all for your first day. So I I gave her some leeway on it. Uh we just. Is she really in there, or or just just tell us if it's gonna be another no. clue? No, 
Mrs. Mrs. Doyle like knows that you're probably exasperated at this point. She she says no. Uh, I'm just here to point you to the actual real location uh, because a responsible adult should know <laughs> where you all are meeting. Uh, your actual club meeting location for the year, and I am your teacher supervisor for your club activities. Uh, is room 283, conference room C, which is just down the hall from the music room. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank yes, you, I, I apologize if this took longer than you, <laughs> than you anticipated, but I do hope that you all had a fun bonding exercise with this, at least, and I, I hope to get to know all of you throughout the rest of the year. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Guess we'll just go to conference room C. Diana doesn't say anything, but she's got her arms crossed and she's very clearly just, like, seething. Anyway, I start marching over there and I am stomping. It's a shock that my heels <laughs> yeah, aren't wet from the that you're not breaking one. <laughs> yeah, sorry, stomping in a way that would not damage my shoes, let's be <laughs> real. Uh, yeah, Va Valerie is also following angrily, but, uh, you know, if uh, Angie is, you know obviously visibly upset then then valerie has to has to be doing the opposite <laughs> <laughs> of course it just makes sense all right so you all um in various levels of stomping make your way down to room 283 uh, it's a disused kind of conference room there are a couple other conference rooms next to it that the staff and students tend to use a bit more often this is kind of the the redheaded stepchild of the conference room area i guess and you can see that like chairs and desks and whatnot have already been sort of moved off to the side of the room so that there is space in the middle of the room where practice can happen and in this room you see a very chipper looking girl she's a shorter girl she has sort of natural orange hair done up in like fluffy pigtails kind of like harley quinn pigtails um she's got round glasses she she's dressed in a lot of like pink and florals and kind of like just simple jewelry and she looks overjoyed to see all of you <laughs> she goes hi oh my god you all made it oh that's so good i'm so oh i'm so relieved i was i was beginning to think that you wouldn't find me but you did and now i know that you're you have the commitment to take over this club from me. I'm so happy. Oh. And she goes over to, to like try to like basically just shake all your hands. Like, hello, hello, my name's Amberly. It's nice to meet everybody. What are all your names? I'm Angie. I'm it's nice to meet Valerie, you, Angie. Valerie Pierce. Valerie, oh you're so oh you're so cool. Oh my god. I can't Yeah, she's <laughs> she's cool, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and then she says hi to to Emily and to, uh, she tries to say hi to Diana, but she like jerks her hand away. Like, no, I'm not doing this. Um, and Karen, she actually says, oh, Karen, it's so nice to see you again. I'm, you're back for another year, I see. Oh, that's great. I, we always need your, your infectious cheerleading spirit. And Karen gives her like a slow thumbs up. She pulls Karen kind of next to her and says, "Everybody, this is Karen. She's a she's a veteran member of the Idol Club. <laughs> I I sent her to to meet all of you to make sure that if you somehow didn't work all of this out, she'd be able to lead you to the right place." <sighs> you knew where the practice room was this whole time. And Karen shrugs. It was more fun this way. <sighs> Whatever we we got here. Are we are we actually? Gonna do any practice? That would be ideal. I know we don't have much time left, uh, but I figured today would be more about about bonding and about getting you all to do like your first exercise together, which is so important for bringing a team together. Um, and in the middle of all this, Diana just like puts her foot down and she is she's had enough at this point. She clenches a fist and says, do you know, do you have any idea how much time you've wasted? We, what, you just said, we don't have any time. We could have been, we could have been warming up. We could have been picking songs to cover. We could have been brainstorming routine ideas. Anything useful instead of you having us run around the school doing sweet fuck all. And Amberly just shrugs and goes, oh, I, I don't know. This seemed like a pretty good warm up to me. Y'all look like you worked up a pretty good sweat. Angie just looks unimpressed. Diana continues then. She says, well, what good is all of that 
if we can't work on our performance skills, we need to be working on our techniques from day one. I was saying to these, to all of you earlier, how competitive the inter-high circuit is. It's not a joke. Oh wait, I forgot. That's fitting, cause your club is a fucking joke, isn't it? McNally has never won anything in any live competitions. God, can't imagine why that might be. Maybe they should enter the uh, puzzle competition instead, since that's apparently what the club is for. <laughs> and Amberly actually laughs at that. Like she, <laughs> she knows that like this isn't the most serious idol club out there, but she she does enjoy a good a bit a good bit of fun. <laughs> I don't I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. Like I'm. I'm not really a fan of the big, like, super serious, oh, we have to be super perfect approach to idoldom. Like, what's the point in winning competitions if no one's having fun? Isn't that what idols are supposed to be about? Uh, you, did you say someone was going to take over being president of the club? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I was, I was hoping that, like, throughout all of this, you all might have worked out, like, who you think might be a good leader, because I'm, like, I'm not even, I graduated, I'm going on to college. I just wanted to make sure that whoever was taking over for me was someone who was really dedicated. You're, you're not even, you, you don't, she doesn't even go here. <laughs> I'm so glad someone took the bait. <laughs> I was going to say it if no one else did. Well... I think I would be a really good president, so... And at that, Diana says, Oh, you, the one who tried to fake her way into being president? Yeah, that puts a lot of confidence in your abilities as a leader. I, don't, uh. I mean, I I found, like, half the clues just, you know, on my own, so I don't feel like I... If anybody's gonna be the leader, I figure it should be me, like... I've been telling you all from the start, we need to start practicing right now. I can, I, I've studied this stuff. I can set us up a schedule. We can get some routine ideas going. We can start practicing even if we, if we have a little time. You don't seem to be able to handle stress very well. I'm handling it very well! You seem a little tense. Um, and Amberly is, is kind of looking at all of this and uh, looking a little uncomfortable. Like, yeah, like, I... I just said, like, I, I wanted to make sure whoever was going to take over would be, like, dedicated, but, like, you seem, like, a little, like, unable to handle things right now. Uh, actually, can I do something terrible? Yes, please do. Uh, I would like to basically try to provoke Diana into just, like, not joining the club. Yes! Because I was like, <laughs> I mean, it sounds, sounds like you don't even, you don't even need this club. You've got everything figured out for yourself. <laughs> All right, I love I love this. Definitely, please roll for this. So you provoke someone susceptible to your words, say what you're trying to get them to do, and roll plus superior. And uh, I'm going to do my favorite thing, which is roll my worst stat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's a two, which is an abject failure. But you, you get to mark potential. Oh. So that's a step towards leveling up, maybe. <laughs> mm hmm. Um, so... On a miss, <laughs> is there even a, an option for a miss? Uh, basically, whenever whenever one of us uh, rolls a, a miss on a move, you get to make whatever GM that's, move yeah, that's true. you want, as, as mean or as hard as you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's up to you. All right. Um, okay, I think I have something. So why don't you say what, you, what you're going to say to Diana first, and I'll tell you how she reacts. I don't know. It seems like you have everything figured out. I don't, I don't seem like you really even need to be part of this club since you've got it all uh, all figured out for yourself. Well, I would prefer to have everybody here on the same page with me because what's worse than being an idol in a group that doesn't know what they're doing? Being a solo idol because the crowds are sick of that. So I'm going to take over this club by force if need be. And what the, the consequence of this is going to be is actually... Um, Diana's going to transform, Ooh. and she is going to, uh, she transforms, uh, before she had kind of like dark hair and a ponytail and just kind of like a oversized sweater and jeans. When she transforms, she becomes almost an androgynous figure with a blue, kind of like almost Ramona Flowers type hairstyle, um, and she's mm -hmm. wearing a white outfit that looks kind of like, like a ranger outfit from D&D, edged with silver and has a lot of like crescent moon and star insignia all over it 
So she transforms and she raises an arm and forms a glowing white bow in her hands. And she pulls out of a quiver on her back what looks like a silver arrow tipped with a microphone head instead of a point. And she's aiming it at Amberly. Now, what was that about who you were going to hand the club over to? I'm going to transform in response to this. All right. So, since this is the first time y'all are doing this, I'm going to explain this for the audience because <laughs> even if you know masks, you don't know this. Yeah. This is a homebrew move that mm -hmm. we've added for this campaign. It's called... Yes, I like this homebrew move a lot. <laughs> it's called Transformation Sequence. Um, and this is a diceless move, so you don't have to roll for this. It's when you transform, or when you begin your transformation, you say what it looks like and what drives you to enter your empowered form. You gain access to all of your powers, and you get to shift any two of your labels, one up and one down. You cannot transform if you have four or more conditions marked, and while transformed, add the following option to the seven to nine choices on the take a powerful blow basic move. And that option is lose sync with your powers, you transform back to your regular form, the GM shifts any two of your labels, and you cannot transform again until you either clear two conditions or a new scene starts. So basically the way we've set up this, this um, Super Idols campaign is it's not a typical superhero story where everybody has their superpowers all the time. It's a magical idol, magical girl situation where you only get your powers if you transform to your magical idol form first. And this is how you get that. So, Valerie, why don't you tell us what your transformation looks like? So, Valerie plants her feet apart and raises her right arm above her, making a grasping motion, and a purple saber appears in her hand. She brings it down in front of her, and it looks like a tear, like cutting through cloth or a curtain, and black and white ribbons pour out of that tear in space and wrap around her and sort of cover her body and then slide down and they, they sort of turn from undifferentiated ribbons into an elaborate gothic lolita outfit with a frilly sort of black dress with white trim and, and frills underneath. Uh, and as her face is revealed, she's, her skin is more pale and sort of porcelain doll-like, and her, her hair grows from her short bob down to her mid-back, and as it completes, a few more ribbons come out of this uh, sort of tear in space she's created, and purple ribbons come out and sort of tie around her waist and tie her hair, accenting the outfit. Alrighty. Uh, and which two of your labels are you going to shift? I'm actually going to shift my savior up and my freak oh, down. Oh, interesting. Well, of course, I, I guess I get your intention in this encounter for sure. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Is anybody else going to follow suit or do you have other ideas in mind? I'm going to stay out of it because I don't want to be the president. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um, and at this point, like, Emily has uh, been very unsure about herself for this whole thing, and she's very scared. Um, and at this point, she's just going to yell, like, um, y you know, I, I wasn't, like, super into the whole idol thing to begin with anyway. Um, bye! <laughs> and she leaves. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, I'm going to transform. All right. So what does your transformation look like? I feel like it's actually one of those things that it kind of happens really quickly. Like, she has the, the fireworks going on, and they kind of just pop, and then she's in her outfit, essentially. I see her, like, she goes down and she punches the ground, and then, you know, everything splinters out, and then it's like fireworks, and then it's just her in her outfit, which she's essentially wearing a snapback hat with uh, her ponytail through the, you know, little hole in the back and uh, the beak is kind of down and then she's got like a kind of bomber jacket on with a tank top crop top and then leggings and uh, kind of sports runner sneakers but the sports runner sneakers are really really sparkly but it's pretty much designed for being like um, really 
good with movement and stuff like that. And she's wearing gloves. Just, just gloves. And really fierce makeup, like, that just appeared there. So, like, red lipstick and, like, really dark shadow makeup and stuff like that. Yeah, but she wasn't gonna, like, sit out of this particular battle. Awesome. And I, sh I should clarify, like, whereas most people's transformations for these sorts of things make them look like somewhat different from how they look in their mundane form, like Dana described mm -hmm. for hers, um, your alternate form isn't that different from your mundane form, other than the fact that you look, like, much flashier. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's what she wants. Like, she wants the whole, the whole both sides of it. No secret identities for her. Yeah. Right. It's not uncommon for that to be the case, but yeah, most people's alternate form looks a little different. I just wanted to make sure that it was clear that yours was mm. outside the dorm there. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so the two of you transformed. Uh, Cynthia, you're, you're hanging back a little bit, sort of like just trying to make sure you know what's going on, I guess, and not get involved if you don't need to. <laughs> Uh, Karen sidles up sort of beside you and uh, she she pulls out like a bag of popcorn. You're not sure where she got it and she she passes you one like she offers it to you. I'll take some popcorn. <laughs> I've always liked Karen. <laughs> <laughs> You're both like the chill ones of the group. <laughs> so yes, Diana has her has her arrow pointed at Amberly and Amberly's got her hands up in front of her like, whoa, now we can talk this out. Uh, so what are y'all going to do about this? I'm going to try to defend Amberly. Alrighty. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. T, I, I forgot to ask you which labels you were shifting. Oh, um, I guess it'd be superior and uh, I'm going to do mundane. Alrighty. So that puts me at a minus two for mundane and a plus three for superior. Sounds good. For this situation, at least, anyway. All right, so yes, yeah, sorry to interrupt you there. So Valerie can roll to so Valerie can roll to defend at this point. Mm -hmm. And what I'm what I'm actually doing or attempting to do is create a like so I have this um, sort of energy construct uh, sword in my right hand, but I'm going to raise my left hand and try to raise a wall between the two of them between Diana and Amberly. Alrighty. So when you defend someone or something from an immediate threat, roll plus savior. So. Rolled in beautiful bones. Very nice. Nice. So you got an 11 on that. On a 10 plus, you keep them safe, you get your wall up, and you get to choose one from either add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. Um, that's interesting. I think... And I'm gonna say, well, you have zero teams, so you could add a single team to the pool. I, I think the the obvious thing would be to take influence over Amberly, but at, at this moment, um, Valerie's concern of like, hey, this is escalating way too way too much is genuine. So I'm going to add a team to the pool. Alright, that sounds good. This is not this is not actually Valerie going like, hey, I'm going to impress the old head. This is like thinking like, hey, no, this is we need to put a stop mm -hmm. to this. That makes sense. And just to clarify for anyone listening or or playing, I don't know how much you know about team. Um, it's basically just a, a collective pool of points that you can pull from to add a bonus to your teammates' rolls if you're able to. So, like, if say if someone rolls like I don't know, like a six on a bad on a move and they're gonna fail, uh, but you're with your teammates, one of your teammates can add a team point to make that roll a seven instead, and they could explain how they're helping you to do that. All right, so anyway, so you have successfully put up a, a, a glowing purple wall between Diana and Amberly, and Diana is like, <laughs> well, you have powers at least, I'll give you that. That's more than I can say for some people entering the whole idol thing. I don't know about these losers over here. She jokes her thumb back over to Cynthia and Karen, and Karen waves. Like, okay. Well, let's just calm down and discuss this. There's no need to start pointing weapons at people. I say pointing my energy sword at her. I don't, I don't know about that. I feel like if we want to decide who's going to lead this fucking club, then somebody needs to show some gumption. And this, the power side of super idledom is part of idledom. Like, if you can't defend yourself in a fight like this, whether it's like a real fight or just a concert, then what are you even doing here? Um, I'd like to do a move. Oh, sure. 
Yeah, I'd like to do uh, provoke someone. Sure. Alrighty, so you can roll your superior on that. Okay. <laughs> you guys are rolling hot today, except for like the one wow. mess that we got. Wow, yeah. That is a 15. That is the maximum roll. <laughs> without like a plus one from yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, I want her to drop the bow. That's my right, so, uh, that's my intention is to get her to drop to drop the bow and to concede all right, so, in a way. So she's gonna do that for sure because part of the ten plus is they do what you want. So what are you gonna do to get her to drop the bow? Um, I'm just gonna launch some fireworks. Sounds good. Like I think she's looking at uh, now violence, Violet, Vivi, mm-hmm. and um, I use this moment to try and shock her into dropping the bow. Because I also acknowledge that that's the immediate danger in, you know, hurting each other isn't going to solve any of this. And yeah, that's my intention is to just get her to drop the bow. I think that makes and sense. And she just says, yeah, and she literally just does some flashy fireworks enough to be like, drop it now. To look at like, and I think like, uh, I guess everybody else doesn't know yet, uh, but the fireworks are a visual effect. They aren't really dangerous in any way. So she probably aims them in a way to like be around her hands as they're holding the bow to get her to drop the bow. Right. Like they're basically Jubilee yeah. Sparks is how we've thought exactly. about them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like really mostly theatrical. Mm-hmm. Like basically just your fists yeah. are sparklers. <laughs> but yeah, I think that works. I think that works to a T. Like she's focused on this exchange with Vivi. Uh, so she's not like seeing your approach. You rush in there and sort of grab the energy bow, which is surprisingly cool to the touch. Yeah. And you you fire off a flash of sparks and that surprises Diana who like goes ah and uh, lets go of both the the bow and the arrow. Actually as she drops the bow, it's just it just sort of dissipates and the arrow mm. clatters to the floor. She goes like, God damn it. <laughs> she tries to scramble to get the arrow off the floor, uh, but it's it's kind of like awkwardly weighted, so she like doesn't yeah. quite get it at first and especially because she's got like all that flowing cloth she has to like move around in <laughs> yeah she's and i'm trying to very be cool. practical <laughs> like very practical nylon for the most part <laughs> this is very much like an edna mode no capes thing. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay um so yeah she's she's fumbling there um and she she sort of like is feeling a little embarrassed and goes like you uh, you you don't understand it's got uh, I've got to do this. They're go- they're going to if I don't. <laughs> and she she stops because she realizes she's, she's starting to say too much. They're going to what? None of your none of your business. And she she tries to no. I think she if- tries to grab the arrow and just like smack you in the face with it because she's like not yeah, thinking right now. Can I just kick the arrow out of the way? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So this sounds like uh, t- directly engage a threat. Okay, sure. Because um... you're defending when you're defending yourself, you're just directly engaging a threat you're not defending someone else okay yeah mm-hmm. so you get to roll danger on that roll danger let's see if my good luck stays <laughs> <laughs> could be worse nine all right and does anybody want to use the team point or do do you want to save it for now uh yeah i'll i'll use that that team point awesome so that can bump that up to a 10 uh so that means you get to pick two off the following list uh you can resist or avoid their blows take something from them Create an opportunity for your allies, or impress, surprise, or fri- or frighten the opposition. Um, so the first one's gonna be take something from them, and um, I'm gonna create an opportunity for my allies. Okay, that's interesting because you didn't choose resist or avoid their blows. <laughs> okay, so what are you taking from them? Well, I thought she was just the way I saw it was she was bending down to grab. Uh, to grab it and I just wanted to kick it out of the way oh yeah I thought she was just reaching down to grab something and then I was or grabbing the the arrow and I was just gonna kick the arrow out of the way no the way I had described it sorry if I wasn't clear about this she had already grabbed the arrow and she was like throw or like swinging it towards your face like the mic end first oh yeah well yes yes, if that clarifies the situation I want to do that that. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, I would resist uh, or avoid the blows, and I would take the. All right, that sounds the arrow that sounds from her. very fair. Uh, and Vivi, what are you doing to help her achieve this? Uh, I think as Diana is, you know, reaching for the the arrow, it just like it glows purple for a moment and jitters jitters away from her oh, hand. Oh, nice! So I use uh, 
try to grab it with telekinesis and maybe don't quite succeed, but move it out of the uh, way. Yeah, yeah. I, that's a very small use of telekinesis, so there's no need for you to, like, do anything extra for that. That, that just works. Mm-hmm. All right, so, yes, you you manage to avoid her hitting you, and you grab the arrow from her. Uh, and she's she's clearly like, this is not going how she planned. She was already, like, more worked up than she wanted to be when she started whatever she's doing right now. So she's not having a great time, like, maintaining her facade of <laughs> superiority here. And she's just, she's, she's kind of breathing hard, and she says, Ah, this was all... Such a bad idea to start with. I really shouldn't have even bothered. Ugh. All right. Well, hold on. Come. Let's just. If there's if there's something like seriously wrong here, maybe we can help. I mean, it's at, it sounds like it sounds like you're in some trouble. Some some of us maybe have trouble of our own, but we can try to help. Okay. And at this point, Amberly tries to come around the wall as well. Like, yeah, like I, I know you're upset, but it it sounds like yeah, it sounds like there's something wrong is there anything we can i'm sorry to say i don't think you'd be a great president for this club but i i don't think that means we can't be friends or help you um amber <laughs> you don't even go here i i think i like to think i know a thing true about running an idol club at least and just maybe get behind the wall right now and let us figure this out all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> she moves back behind the wall by the way your outfits rock she yells from behind the wall. I, uh, I do a little, like, toss of my ponytail, and I say, thanks. And then I put my hands on my hips. What are your idol names? Amber, not right now. <laughs> See, this is exactly what I'm talking about, Diana says, like, exasperated. Like, she has no idea what she's doing. Like, this is a dangerous situation that I am admittedly pushing upon you, but she does not know how to act when under pressure. Uh, quick Quick question. So there's like actual like protections in place to to protect our identities uh, as part of this club. Like this is something that we would know going in. Yeah, like the fact that like the fact that the room was on the flyer to begin with should have been a tip off because like nobody's supposed to know where like teen idols practice. Okay, then uh, then Vivi like leans around to to look around the wall that she created and says, uh, "It's." It, it's violence, Violet. I don't know. I, I'm pretty new to the scene, so uh, v Vivi for short. Oh my god! I think I saw something about that. Isn't th in like the, the idol forums? People have been talking about you a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm trying that. Well, uh, okay, may maybe she's right. This isn't the time, but, but <laughs> it yeah, really it's... isn't. At this point, she like tries to get another arrow out of her quiver, and she tries to reform her bow. Uh, Vivi, we're in the middle of something here. Bane Raven, by the way, I just do like a little finger wave. Um, stop that. Stop that. Whatever you're doing with the bow, we're having a conversation. <laughs> you put that down. And while all this is going on, uh, Cynthia, Karen kind of like gives you a look and you're, you guys are kind of situated like kind of behind all of this. Like you can see Diana's back as she's like just yelling at everybody. Um, and she pulls out like a slingshot, like an old school slingshot, the kind you would see like in a Saturday morning cartoon. And she sort of just nods her head in that direction and gives you the slingshot. I'll take it and I'll ask her, is this a regular occurrence? Eh, it happens. Rivalries and such. All right, I'll take some popcorn and I'll slingshot it over at the group. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, th this, this doesn't take any like, this doesn't need a move. You 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 fling some popcorn over, and are you going to say anything with it as well, or are you just trying to, like, <laughs> distract them? Uh, I'll say, are you guys almost done over there? Uh, and Diana has gotten her, kind of gotten her bow together at this point, and she's still very much on edge, and she's like, no, no, we are not done, and now she's pointing the arrow at you. Why are you doing this? Because this was all supposed to be so easy. This was just supposed to be I was supposed to come in I was supposed to join the club become the president and uh, stuff uh, if you want to be the president maybe you should be nice to people niceness doesn't get you anywhere in this racket skill does that is not true when you have an idol group it takes group chemistry we have to work as a unit it is not all just about you being mean to us and ordering us around we're supposed to be in this together well, that's not how they do it at MacArthur. I don't give a shit about MacArthur. Actually, I'm going to give you an opportunity to pierce her mask here because okay. she just let something slip. Okay, yeah. Uh... Oh. 
Oh no. <laughs> Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's an eight. Eight's not bad. That's not bad. It's still a partial (laughs) success, which means you get to ask one off the Pierce the Mask list. It's, what are you really planning? What do you want me to do? What do you intend to do? How could I get your character to blank? Or how could I gain influence over you? Okay, um, I'm going to ask, uh, MacArthur, what are you really planning? It's got Oh god, there's no point anymore. Fine. Guys, I don't go here either. I... (sighs) I was supposed to come in here and become the president of your stupid little club so that I could dismantle it from the inside. Why are you so worried about our club? I really shouldn't be, to be honest. Like, you you guys have never won anything, like, under this, under this character's leadership. Nothing has ever happened. But the leader of the MacArthur Club is very paranoid and... Rightly so, like, you really need to be able to make sure that you're on top of all of your competition, and the sooner we can take out one of our rivals before the competition starts, the better. Yeah, this seems like way too much effort for you to go through. (sighs) It kind of does, doesn't it? And her shoulders kind of slump, and she does start to lower the arrow at this point. I eat some more popcorn. (laughs) (laughs) Karen smiles and and takes a handful as well. Actually, and also she like raises the popcorn bag and and offers it to Diana as well. Diana hesitates and then walks over and grabs some. (sighs) I, I didn't. They said that this was worth doing. It really, this has just been such a frustrating couple of days overall. I... Can, can uh, let's just be done with this. You you know what I'm up to. I know that I'm not going to be successful at this point. Let's just be done with it. I'll go. Fine. I'm I'm gonna. Uh, v- Vivi walks over and says, "Look, this whole plan was really really stupid. But I know it's hard to get ahead. Maybe just like stop wasting your time on." elaborate schemes and just you know focus on trying to be a better idol that just uh, that's what i was trying to tell our club president like i wasn't lying when i was telling you we should be focusing on practice and honing our skills like i didn't want to i didn't want to be here i just wanted to practice and get better like but they insisted like it's important to make sure that you're you take care of the competition yeah just just do all the stuff you said just you know do your your practice and you know your songs and just like fucking tell her to get over it. Uh, I wish it were that easy. She's so controlling. I don't know if mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. do that without really upsetting her. Like the fact that I didn't do this, she's already going to be super upset. Well, you could just infiltrate over there and dismantle it from the inside. In other words, maybe you just need to Perform a coup and make somebody else president. Hmm. I mean, if I do, if I play my cards right, maybe. Oh. And sh- you can see like the, the like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the meme with the the math equations going mm-hmm. in front of her face. Like, <laughs> actually, you can you can literally physically see that it's like glowing energy in front of her face. <laughs> it's the same. Nice. It's, it's the same energy that her bow is formed out of. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna say honestly, it sounds like you're way more serious about this than your president is. And I'm I'm actually going to try to uh, comfort or support Aww. Diana. So when you comfort or support someone, you get to roll mundane. And on a hit, they'll hear you. And my mundane is zero, but I suspect that's the highest in the group at this point. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> oh, and you used up your team point earlier. Yes. Okay, so unfortunately, no, you, you won't <laughs> you won't hear her. Um, I will say a thing that sometimes comes up in Powered by the Apocalypse games is a miss doesn't mean that I failed. It could also mean that I succeed, and that's bad. True. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with what you said. I'm gonna I'm gonna say she she seems like she hears you. She's she's sort of nodding in agreement. Like, I think I think you're right. I think I need to do something. Like, I'm I'm not on board with what our club president is doing, and I. I guess maybe if you're right, like, I, I do seem, like, a little stressed right now. Maybe if I work on that and manage it, maybe maybe I could do a better job of, of getting 
in power over there. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. You know what? Thank you. I think I will. I think I will do that. And she sort of, she actually sort of smirks a little bit. And I'm gonna have you mark afraid because you're, you're not sure what she means by that, but it doesn't seem good. Perfect. But yeah, at this point, I think the situation is winding down. People can detransform now if, you, if they want. Diana's going to detransform. Um, there is actually a detransform move that we can do as well. I'm going to say after uh, Diana detransforms, I'll just, uh, I'll wait a few moments. And then when it seems like, you know, she really has calmed down, I will just, I'll just do the same. All right. I will as well after Diana does. All right. So when you two detransform... This is a formal move. You transform back to your regular form. And you lose act- access to your powers while you're in your regular form. And the GM may shift any two of your labels. This is basically my way of making sure that you don't, like, mold your characters and min-max them through the transformation move. Mm-hmm. So I'm probably just gonna, if I can remember what you changed, just change your labels back to what they were before. There we go. I've changed those back for you. Okay, so you all just you all just kind of hang out in the room for a bit, and like, obviously no practice is going to get done today, but maybe that's okay for today. Mm-hmm. You really did have a great team <laughs> bonding exercise. Yeah. Uh, so you all sit around, you share the popcorn bag with, with Karen, like, you play with the slingshot, you fling some popcorn around in the air, you make a mess of the room, but you know you can clean it up after, so it's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, at this point, Valerie is definitely too tired to to keep up the uh, too cool to interact act. And it's just like, I don't know, the, the level of tired where you are actually more relaxed because it's too much effort to be on guard all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, and it's one of those things where it could have gone really bad and it didn't. So I think uh, for Angie, she just feels a bit relieved and yeah. is like, let's just worry about the president question another time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and Karen shrugs is like, I could do it. Wait, I what? Could, I, I've been around. I could be president. Does sound like Karen has a lot of experience. I mean, you just kind of watched while that was going down. That wasn't really leadership, I'd say. Well, that's what I do. I'm I'm your cheerleader. And then Amberly chimes in. Yeah, that this is literally what she does. She she's been here for like the last 3 years that I've been here, maybe 4 years. And she is our wota, I guess. And to anybody who doesn't know what that term means, that's that's an idol fandom term for basically an obsessive cheerleader. They they do all the like complicated stuff with light sticks that you see at idol concerts and whatnot. Uh. And Karen raises a hand up like she's got a light stick in her hand, but it's it, there's nothing there. And she goes, go team. Okay, well, it was Valerie and I that de-escalated the situation. Mm-hmm. But maybe we don't need a president. Maybe we're just fine figuring out all the shots as a group. And Amberly smiles and said, and says, you know what? I think that sounds really good. Like, I love this collective spirit that you all are building. That sounds really encouraging to me. That's that's kind of what I wanted to see from the group coming up under okay. me. Okay, anyway, yeah, Valerie, what do you think? <laughs> uh, I kind of I, I look Angie up and down a little incredulously and say, uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. You know, we, we did fine. Karen shrugs. No president sounds good. And Cynthia, what do you have to say to that? I don't have anything to say <laughs> it's uh it's been an experience and i've taken it all in <laughs> i'm not super convinced that we don't need a president but i'm gonna see what happens amberly says oh yeah you do need to at least put a name in the president's spot on the on the club formation form at the office but it doesn't have to be the person you actually listen to like oh uh, you know andrew why don't you just put your name there then you know it'll be fine you can I mean, we don't, we don't... It just needs to be someone the teacher can contact if you all get in trouble or something. Yeah. I mean, then, like she said, we don't, we don't need to, to listen to anything. It can just be, you know, your name on the on, on the sheet. Then, every, then everyone's happy, right? I mean, yeah, I can put my name on there, sure. And then if anything comes up, I'll tell everyone. <laughs> and Amberly smiles very wide, like, Oh, I'm so excited for all of you. This is going to be beautiful. I'm going to leave you all to your own devices at this point, because I really should 
go, I think. <laughs> You're right, I don't go here. <laughs> but I really wanted to make sure that I, I sent everyone off into the new year right, at least. So I hope for the best for all of you. Oh, thank Thanks. you. Thanks. And here, she pulls out of her, like, very cute, like, um, anime Sanrio purse. Um, she pulls out <laughs> a set of, like, pink glittery business cards that have her, like, her name, her her cell number, both her, her real name, which is um, Amberly Sonnenfeld, and also her idol name, which is Solara. Uh, so you have a way to contact her if you need her for anything. Okay, I guess I'll take her card. Yep, I will too. Oh, I'll take a card. I'm just writing down her info here. All right, so so Amberly waves you all goodbye and wishes you well. Um, and that basically just leaves the three of you and Karen are the Fort McNally School Idol Club. Hooray! And Karen puts her hand in the middle, like you're gonna like you're gonna do like a group thing. Yeah, I put my hand in there. I'll put my hand in. <sighs> <laughs> and then I put my hand in. I feel like we all look up at Valerie and just wait for her. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And Karen says, Fort McNally idols and slowly raises her hand Yay. up. <laughs> I think we need to work on the chair. Well, we're not a cheer club, so. But it doesn't sound like I don't get excited by hearing that. Like, when we're gonna do a performance, we need to come up with a better chant. Yeah, we'll work on the chant. I thought it was pretty good. It's a work in progress. <laughs> and that's where, where we're leaving things. We, we, we pull out back through the window as you all discuss what you may, may or may, may not do for team cheers in the future. <laughs> but yes, you we have we have our idol club formed! Yay! 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 yay. Yeah. We did it! <laughs> Genuine yay. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, as as a stinger, we're going to pan back over to Aunt Teresa, and you can see her on a very, like, official-looking black cell phone talking to someone. Said, yes, yes, we confirmed that she is joining the Idol Club, as expected. Yes, no, yes, we confirmed the room. Yep. They did have an encounter, but it seems that her new associates have taken care of it. They do seem to have some powers of their own that may be worth taking into consideration. All right. Yes. Yes, C-Sharp will be keeping an eye on this situation very closely. All right. Goodbye. And as that scene fades out, we get one last continuation of a character introduction started earlier. Okay, so Cynthia is actually a top secret government agent from a military background. One of her grandparents is a decorated army veteran, and her parents are both high ranking military officials. Her parents encourage her to get involved in the military from a very young age, especially once the government started recruiting super idols for various projects. As she grew into her rebellious teens, she wanted to be an idol but she wanted to do it on her own terms. So for a while, she pursued her own dreams of stardom, building up an image of herself as an 80s glam rock diva called Symphoria. However, before she could gain much traction, her powers awakened. And unfortunately for Cynthia, the powers only made the military even more interested in her. The superhuman branch of military, C-Sharp, or Canadian Superhuman Activity Response and Planning, was awed by Cynthia's unique abilities. As well, their internal algorithms suggested that she had the potential to become one of the strongest superpowered people on the planet. So under intense pressure from her parents, Cynthia agreed to join C Sharp and train with them to hone her powers. Now after having trained with them for some time, Cynthia is more used to her role in C Sharp, but still not psyched about it. She kind of dreads what might happen if she continues down the path, but stays in line out of a sense of duty to her parents and a faint hope that maybe she could become the idol she wants to be. At this stage in her training, the branch has just relocated her to Fort McNally High, a school this small and out of the way. It's a perfect place to hide such a powerful soldier from prying enemy eyes. Hey 
there everyone, Erin here. I'm just coming in from the editing bay here to say thank you so much for listening to the first two episodes of Super Idols RPG. We've all been planning this for a very long time now, since at least December of 2019, and I'm so glad we're finally getting to premiere the show now. There are just a couple things I want to go over here before the end of the episode, so please stick around for a few more minutes if you have time. First, I want to give a quick disclaimer. I am very much still a baby GM when it comes to masks, and I'm still getting a handle on all the rules. I know for these first couple episodes, I, for instance, leaned a bit too heavy on assess the situation at first, and didn't use it correctly in every instance, so that's something that'll hopefully be ironed out in future sessions. I think one of the provokes in this episode was also slightly incorrect. That's supposed to be more of a move to use your words to press someone's buttons, not to physically surprise them. Most of us on the podcast are new to playing the game, so please forgive us if we occasionally get something wrong, and let us know when we've messed up so we can do better in the future. That should all improve as the episodes progress. Second, these first two episodes covered our first session, which was recorded in early February 2020. This was, of course, before all the coronavirus stuff really kicked into high gear in March, and it was also before the big wave of police brutality protests and Black Lives Matter activism that started in late May. So, yeah. None of us really had any idea just how turbulent a year this would end up being. So, just to clarify regarding the fiction of this story, since it does take place in the year 2020, Super Idols RPG takes place in an alternate universe where there was no coronavirus pandemic in 2020, but the Black Lives Matter protests did still happen. It is not my place to make up too much speculative fiction about that, since I do not want to diminish the efforts of real, living, breathing people who are fighting out there for a better world right now, but by that same token, I don't want to erase that from the timeline either, because that likewise sweeps those efforts under the rug. Given that, I think it needs to be stated clearly, the official stance of Super Idols RPG is that Black Lives Matter, all cops are bastards, and law enforcement will never be glorified on this show. Even if hashtag Black Lives Matter has stopped trending by the time you listen to this, I urge everyone to continue donating in support of racial justice and signal boosting black voices and art however you can. One very relevant black artist I can mention that you should definitely go check out is Ansta, who is the title card artist for Maho Profile and also did our lovely Super Idols character portraits. You can find her work over at onstamonsta.weebly.com or on Twitter at onstamonsta, that's O-N-S-T-A-M-O-N-S-T-A. She is always a super joy to work with and brings so much life to every piece that she makes. I highly recommend going and commissioning her if you can, if she's got slots open. She's just a bundle of joy in this world. Oh my god. Also, I am aware that so far we are yet another white bread RPG podcast. And while that will start to improve beginning in episode 4, there's still a lot more we can do to increase the amount of diverse talent that we feature on the show. I plan to start having guest players on the show once we start getting into stuff like rival idol groups and the SingStar tournament, or even just random encounters with supervillains and the like. I am also very open to expanding the rotating cast with more regular members over time as the story evolves. So if you are a POC, especially if you are black or indigenous, we would love to have you on the show to play with us and to promote your work. Heck, I'll promote your work just cause, even if you don't want to play with us. So. Please reach out to me on Twitter at Aaron Cerise if you want to participate in the show in some way or have a promo that you'd like us to share. In any case, thank you so much again for listening. Definitely be sure to leave us a comment on YouTube or a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser or wherever else if you can. That sort of word of mouth is especially helpful for podcasts since they're a lot less viral than, say, a video or a social media post. Also, if you like the show and want to support it with your dollars, you can donate to us on Patreon. I have my Aaron Cerise Patreon set up now so that you can choose a tier based on the project you want to support. So you can go there and pledge whatever amount you want to support for Super Idols, and you'll know that that donation will go towards stuff like commissioning art for the show, transcripts, domain costs, and all that good stuff. 
All right, that is all from me. Our regular release schedule for Super Idols is going to be one episode every three weeks, so I'm very much looking forward to bringing you our third episode in three weeks' time. I will leave you all to regular outro Aaron now. Have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and goodbye! Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. Our cast for today was Dana Alexa as Valerie Pierce, Tia Wind as Evangeline Blake, Michelle as Cynthia Knight, and Aaron Cerise as the GM. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad. This song and all other music for this episode are royalty-free tracks under license from Audioblocks.com with the exception of Gothic Dark, a Creative Commons track by Paratune. If you liked this episode, please consider liking and commenting on the YouTube upload or leaving us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. Thank you again for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! It's actually not, I guess, not to her liking. Very sorry, I just hit my mic. Whoops. That's okay. Um, I'm a gesturer when I talk. <laughs> it's okay, I am too. I have to avoid it. What avoid do you mean they can't see me moving my hands on a podcast? <laughs> it's very important.